Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you my five heat sources and my four heat presses in order to help you make an informed decision as you get ready to search for the heat press that's right for you. All right, I will show you what my first design looks like. I'll show you how I got started with my heat presses and all of that. But before I do, I need you to do the three things. Hit the like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. So without further ado, let's get started. If you're anything like me, and you, when you first got your Cricut, you are ready to dive right in and get started with making your first t-shirt. Well, that's a tutorial for another day that I'll leave down, link down in the description below. But when I first got started with my Cricut, I did not have a heat press. I was using my regular household iron, and this is the first thing that I ever made. And it just says, God is greater than the highs and lows. This is glitter HTV on a canvas pouch. And as you can see, it's already peeling up and it's, that's not supposed to happen. Well, I was using my household iron and I had to, you know, keep pressing and keep moving and press hard and hold it and use my cell phone as my timer because I didn't know exactly what I was doing. And therefore, you know, I'm already having this peeling action. This thing has never been put in the washing machine, so this should not be happening. But if you are like me and all you have right now is a household iron, my suggestion is make sure there's no water in it. So when you get ready to use your household iron, there shouldn't be any water and use it on the highest temperature possible. You will have to press it very hard and you'll have to move it around and use your timer on your cell phone or your timer on your microwave or whatever timer you have to move the iron around to make sure you're getting enough heat in all of the right places for whatever you're pressing, okay? So after I had used an iron for about a month and then I realized this wasn't it, I went ahead and bought my first heat press. My next heat press was my nine by nine Cricut Easy Press. And I love this heat press. I love the fact that I can, you know, go all the way up to 400 degrees with the temperature, just by pressing the temperature setting, I can set it to 400 degrees. I can set it to 30 seconds, 10 seconds, five seconds. Um, I love the versatility of it. I love the fact that I can move it anywhere in my craft room. I love the fact that um, by just looking at the bottom, you can see that the plate will give you even pressure throughout. So if I was just going to press this pillowcase that's on my table right here, I would get good um, even heat. And you know, you have the, the solid um, handle right here so you can get good pressure. So this was my next um, heat press and I love it. Um, it just wasn't big enough for what I needed to do as I continue to um, craft. Even though I felt like this one wasn't big enough, I also felt like I wanted something that was smaller. So I purchased this one. So this is my third one. This is a HTV Ront mini press. And I love this little guy. It also has a nice solid base. Um, the thing about this one, it does have an auto off feature. So does the Cricut 9x9. Um, this one gets up to 356 degrees, so I couldn't use it for sublimation, but I can use it for smaller projects like hats, socks, um, and just smaller things where I needed to get into nooks and crannies. I actually purchased this one because I was doing um, HTV on coasters. So this is a viable option. It was about 35-ish dollars. I'll make sure to put a link down below in the description box. I love this HTV Ront mini press and I also love my 9x9 Easy Press. Both have an auto off feature that I love. My next heat press was this 15 by 15 swing out heat press and it came with all of these attachments. And the good thing about it is yes, that it comes with all of these attachments because it actually comes with a mug press and a hat press and a plate press and a tumbler press. It just, it comes with pretty much everything you need to press all the other objects that you might be interested in pressing. In addition to, you know, being a swing out, so this top plate swings out, it goes up past 400 degrees. This tray slides out, which is convenient, and I love that. Let me move these to show you 
Um, and I use this one, you know, when I first got it, I, I used it all the time. Um, but the downside for me was that this table is my workspace. So if I was using something that required a heat source and I needed to, you know, put my object on the plate, I had to swing it out. So I need to have this space completely open and I couldn't always do that. So I was having to move stuff to swing it out, to put it and I, that just became an inconvenient for me. The good thing about this heat press is that it is 15 by 15. So it provides a nice size for whatever you're pressing. This plate, this tray swings out, which is fantastic. Um, it does give good heat fast. It, it heats up super fast, good pressure, excellent pressure. And, you know, you just push it down like that and you pull it up and then it's very easy to use. I love all of that. The only downside for me is that I needed a dedicated space for this because of the, you know, the swing out function of it. And I didn't have that because this is my only workspace in my craft room. I love this heat press. I'll put a link down below. It is an excellent option. It is very affordable because it comes with all the attachments. You don't need to buy a separate mug press and a plate press and a, you know, all those other things because it comes with it. This one just didn't work for me anymore because I needed a dedicated space that I did not have. I'll show you the current heat press that I'm using that you'll see mostly in most of my videos now because I use it most often, but I'm not getting rid of this one because I still love it. All right, so my last and final heat press that I have here in my house is the 15 by 15 clamshell heat press by Starcraft, or you can call it Starcraft 15 by 15 clamshell, whatever floats your boat. This is the heat press that I'm, I use most often. Um, I love this heat press. This is, of course, is the heat plate. It is also the same size as the swing out heat press that I just showed you um, previously. I love this one because it also has an auto off feature. I can use this side of the table and this side as my workspace. I'm not worried about, you know, the heat being transferred over here. The only thing that's going to have any heat is what's on this plate. And I love that. I love the fact, so clamshell, you know, different from the swing out is that I just press it down and pull it back up. Um, I did have my husband build a stand for me because I needed my um, heat press to be at more of an eye level for me. So when I'm, you know, placing my shirt or whatever I'm pressing on my plate that I could, you know, see it and make sure that I'm getting, you know, my, my product placed perfectly. Try saying that fast 15 times. All right. Um, so this is, you know, the one that I'm using right now. I, like I said, I still love the swing out heat press. I just needed a clamshell because of space. So if you have a dedicated space for a, a swing out heat press, excellent option. If you are like me and you are limited on space, clamshell is the way to go. Pay attention when you're purchasing your heat press, pay attention to the plate size. Okay. Because you might find one that looks similar and it has a smaller plate, but pay attention to that. Pay attention to the dimensions of it, okay? Um, and those are the things that I just, and pay attention to whether or not it has an auto off timer. I don't think the swing out does, um, but that is also important because if you can, in case you forget to turn it off, you wanna make sure it's gonna turn off on its own. All right, so hopefully this was helpful for you, especially if you just purchased a Cricut and you're ready to get into making some shirts or, you know, whatever you want to put your heat transfer vinyl on. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. If it has been, go ahead and do the three things. Hit the like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.